Hey, listen, this is uh, this is all good news, uh, and I'm really grateful for you guys taking the time to talk about something as important as land conservation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think uh, we were talking off mic about the fact that so much of the success of a program like this comes down to, to funding. And I, I thought that maybe, uh, Donna, might, would you be able to fill us in on what the Maryland Agriculture Land Preservation Foundation and what this matching program is? And then we can get into the Queen's uh, side of this. So the MAF funding um, from the state comes from what they call the ag transfer tax. That's when a piece of ground is taken out of ag production and put into residential use, a 5% tax is assessed on that transfer. And that funds land preservation. So each county collects ag transfer tax. And part of that is retained by the county and part of it is submitted to the state. So in Queen Anne's County, we are able to retain 80% of the collected ag transfer tax and the other 20% is sent to the state of Maryland through the Maryland Department of Agriculture to be utilized. And it's only for Maryland Ag Land Preservation Foundation. It is restricted and committed funds. So the throughout the year, the county collects their ag transfer tax, the state collects their ag transfer tax from all the counties, and that funds the land preservation program. So this past year, the governor budgeted $95 million statewide for solely to be used through mouth. So that $95 million gets divided in half and each county gets an equal share. So our equal share is approximately $1.8 million. That's what we're gonna start out with. So all through 23, 23 counties get the 1.8 million. So the remaining half of the 95 million gets split up among the counties that do the matching funds program. And the matching funds program is where the state asks the county how much are you going to put in of your own individual county money to put towards the matching funds? So the county has an opportunity to use their ag transfer tax that they retain. We also have a solar fee tax um, that is collected that is directed to land preservation. And if the commissioners um, discuss and vote in using general funds, they can use, utilize that as well. The maximum that the county can put in of county money is $1,333,333. If each county puts in the maximum of that amount, the state will match for every dollar the county pledges, they will give you back $1.50 in addition to your initial allocation. So you get a maximum of $2 million more. Yeah. So our initial allocation was roughly around 1.8 million. Our commissioners decided to put in the full 1,333,333 dollar county match, and then the state gives us an additional two million dollars. So we're basically starting out with roughly around 5.1 million dollars to start our easement acquisition program for 24. Jim, this is really big stuff, isn't it? You know, there's, a, there's a lot of anxiety in the county, as you know, of people feeling like the farmland is at risk. Uh, as solar farms comes to mind, for example. This is really um, a, a record uh, achievement on the part of QAC, is it not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I will say that, uh, you know, I love listening to Donna because she makes it work and she it makes it pretty much effortless. But uh, I know it's a lot more than that. It, it is a ton of work. So, you know, we greatly appreciate her. And, uh, you know, she, she thinks she's retiring, but we'll see about that. <laughs> but, 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 but that being said, you know, this, this all came about, you know, the, this set of commissioners has been together for a long time. And we've always wanted to do something in, in preserving our farmland, our, our rural aspect of the county. Uh, but funding was always an issue. Uh, so when uh, when solar was in the in the works, you know, five or six years ago, uh, we we in Queen Anne's County said, you know, let's be prepared for it. Let's put a zone in for it, and we put a zone in for it. And with the zoning, and then and discussing with some of these solar mega solar farm uh, people, uh, you know, about their projects, I come to find out that they all expect to and build into their number. Uh, uh, personal property tax. So what we did in Queen Anne's County is we said let's let's collect that personal property tax, and let's use that as our funding source for mouth. 
So, you know, as, as these solar arrays come, you know, it, the downside is they're taking rich farmland out of production. Uh, we, we changed our zoning to, to make sure they can't no they can no longer strip off the topsoil off the top of the, of the, of their farms and sell it off. So that has to stay. And if we're going to, you know, we, we, Queen Anne's County is going to do our part for renewable energy. We wanted to make sure that we were also doing our part in preserving as much of this farmland as we can and using that as a funding source. And, and right now, you know, it, it, it doesn't fund enough as far as I'm concerned, but we're, we're waiting for a couple more to come online. And uh, when they do, we'll have a really nice funding source uh, for the mouth program. And uh, we look forward to years. We're number two in the state now, but we've got a long way to go before we can catch up to number one. And we are. Is, it, is there a kind of a master list of areas that you want to focus on? So in our comprehensive plan, there's a section that is designated as a priority preservation area. So 10 years ago when the um, 2010 comprehensive plan was in the process of being updated, the commissioners met with the planning commission and designated um, our ag land uh, that's ag zoned in the county as a priority preservation area, which would be the focus of land preservation. And it's an optional program. It's a volunteer program. You don't have to go into it. It's not required by law. It's um, anyone that's interested um, there are requirements through the state. You have to have a minimum of 50 acres and you have to have qualifying soils. 50% of your farm has to have class one, class two, and class three soils. And woodland is eligible as well. So they do put a focus on the tillable land that grows crops, but they also have a focus on green infrastructure, which is the um, timber production. So we have a very, very long waiting list of properties that have been interested in getting funding, but we never have enough money to fund them. Right now, we've got 112 properties on a waiting list to be funded, and we're averaging, um, I'd say over the prayer, probably last five to eight years, maybe six or seven farms a year gets funded, give or take. Some years are better, some years are not as good. So when you're knocking out five or six farms, it does it takes a very long time to get through that list. And we constantly have new properties coming in that are interested that come in the first time and say, hey, we would like to put our property in land preservation. We had 16 new interested properties this pa the past mm -hmm. year. So we may knock off eight or nine or 10, but we have eight or nine or 10 that are new that are coming in. So we never have enough money. It would be wonderful. If the state would say, "Hey, Donna, here's forty million dollars. Knock off your list. We could, we could do it." <laughs> yeah. Is your funding is this kind of funding threatened uh, as uh, Annapolis starts to deal with some budgeting issues? Uh, yes, actually, at our last uh, monthly mouth meeting, uh, the state director, state exec, excuse me, state executive director Michelle Cable kind of gave us a projected budget for 25 and 26. And for 25, this past year for 24, we had $95 million. The anticipated budget for 25 is 36 million. So it's being cut by two thirds. Mm. And the following year, they're anticipating it be uh, 33 million statewide. So we're getting significant cuts. So we've been very, very fortunate in the last eight years, while well, Governor Hogan and Governor Moore have been um, in office, that they have supported um, land preservation and it has fully funded it. But unfortunately, times are getting ready to get really thin. So um, unfortunately, we're not going to have the big easement offers in the next couple of years like we have in the past eight. So it's going to be significantly less. I mean, yeah. Do you guys advocate for continuing these kind of programs? Or? Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, that's where the budget sits right now. We, you know, the, the final budget's where the rubber meets the road. So, but there's a lot of, lot of uh, strings being pulled right now between college funding, mouth, you know, the, the renewable energy issues. I mean, it's, it's, we're getting bombarded by a lot of things right now. And, and you know, Queen Anne's County is blessed because, you know, our, our finances are in great shape. You know, we're, we're getting ready to break ground on, on a brand new board of ed building, and we've got other things going on in the county. And we're able to do those and, and still fully fund our schools. So we're, 
we're blessed there, but I would I would hate to see this number get cut that much. I mean, that's that's a lot. And you know, here it is. We're 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 doing everything we humanly can to preserve, and you get this chopped out from underneath you. It's it's frustrating. Uh, and Dave, just, Dave, just to dovetail on what Jim's saying too, that's why you know I think we were really forward thinking and looking at using solar because we you know you look at how the state's pushing renewables mm -hmm. and though they may strip money back from us on the budget side of mouth i think we've set up and, and actually counties around us have kind of jumped onto what we did to set up that we will be able to fund it in the future because mm -hmm. they're going to put more solar farms in which means right. we're going to generate more so probably means we're going to backfill whatever the state may pull back so I feel like we're in a very good position. We got to give up something for the solar. So when we give that up, we get it back, and, and maybe we don't need to state at some point. Who knows? I mean, we're we're there on education, so why not uh, on uh, land preservation? That I, one thing that I would like to say, I've kept track of over the last 19 years that I've been working on this program, uh, how much money that the county has put in of county funding, and what the return is on what the state has given us. Now, I haven't included this year's settlements that have occurred now, but as of the end of fiscal year 23, the county has put in a total of $11,553,000, and they've received $56,360,000 back from the state. So that's a five-to-one return for every dollar that you use in county money. You get $5 back from the state. Yeah. And I've always, yeah, I've always said to the commissioners, a good, a nice way to look at this is these are enabling farmers and landowners to number one, pay off mortgages, to buy farm equipment, to pay for fertilizer, buy more land, and they're spending it back in the community. You know, it's not like it's going out of the county and out of the state. It's going right back into the community to support agriculture and agricultural businesses, yeah. which is huge. Yeah. I mean, when you start talking about you know, the combination of the two of having $70 million put back in Queen Anne's County's coffers for the last 19 years, that's a lot. Well, thank you all. Mm -hmm. Get it up Absolutely.